Hi Oslo users. We wanted to have a more technical example to go with the series on building CCLs. So in this video I'm actually going to assess a technical parameter known as chief ray angle although in my uh, program I tend to call it telecentricity because I'm essentially testing what the angle of this ray is uh, relative to zero hitting this image plane. Why would I want to do that? Many modern sensors depend on the angle of the cones that hit them. And if it's perfectly telecentric, these uh, cones will actually hit with that central ray, that principal ray being perpendicular to the sensor plane. And that represents a condition that the image of this stop through the back portion of the lens is projected off to infinity in image space. So that is the uh, general problem that I'm going to look at. This certainly could be something that I'd care about uh, for other types of parameters, such as what's the relative illumination, how bright is it in the corner versus in the middle, and all sorts of different parameters. The general class of problems is where you have something that you need in Oslo and you want to know it across the field of view. And the way Oslo is set up to get that data, you would have to change the object point, evaluate with a command, change the object point, evaluate with the command. Some of these things are built in, but not everything that you might ever want is built in. The beauty of Oslo is that it's pretty simple to write your own little program, your own little CCL to give you any customized data that you want out of it. So here is uh, my program. It's very important for me to say that I just didn't put this together from scratch. What I tend to do is plan ahead. I think about the different things I might need it to do. And then I lay the program out and then tend to type it in. You may have your own uh, development uh, methodology. I've shown other tricks on using the help system and command prompts and lots of different things with different commands to determine how different commands work and I have my way of doing that. So I could go to the help or I could do something like let's say I want to know what the uh, trace ray general command asked for. I could do the force prompt and just hit a bunch of OK's here and then at the end there it's it's giving me what that command is and at the end I've got it in the history buffer. So I did a lot of that in preparation for this. So preparing is quite important. Let's look at the piece of code. Well, first, I suppose, let's why don't we just run it? So this is going to tell us what the angle is. And it's also going to do a little check to make sure that we are actually tracing the correct rays here, because I want the rays that go through the center of the stop, because those are going to be the ones that are the central bundle, central ray in the bundle. And those are the ones that, if it is telecentric, would be perpendicular or at least would have some angle that biases this cone. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. I cleared the text window by right clicking on it first. So here it asks for number of points integer. I'm going to use, uh, in this case, uh, how about we use 11? and number of points 11. Now it turns out that parameter is asking for the same thing and I'll show that in a moment. So here I didn't actually turn off the output in my CCL program which is something that you normally might want to consider doing. It You can turn off the output into the actual window and the data is still there for you to pull out inside of the program so that you can get your data and then you can turn it back on and output what you care about. The issue with that is people may have the, a different desired setting there. So if you write a general piece of code and you change a preference like that, that preference is STP OUTP, STP OUTP, and you can do on or off. It's on now and that means it's going to go ahead and put data into this output window. If I turn it off, it wouldn't do it. So you have to turn it on and off at the right point in the program. So for this case, I have not used it because I'm not sure what setting you might like to use for that. By the way, preferences, if you do not remember from my initial video, can be found here under set preference. So there's a whole bunch of different options. So that's how we get to it under file. So this not only did a set object point and then trace ray and continually went cycled through that 
at the end I stored some data and I wrote it out here so the normalized field from 0 to 1 1 being the full field of view this is the telecentricity in degrees and this is the pupil ray intersects that's where this ray the central ray is hitting going through this uh, uh, pupil location the stop location here so this program does quite a quite, quite a fair amount the key here is that it's quite useful because I have to change that object point and that becomes very click click oriented so what we do here is we have the telecentricity calc I have my different parameters defined this because I didn't really want to deal with um, doubles and integers I just went ahead and made one variable as an integer one variable as a double and then I didn't have to worry about types the negative of this is uh, you have to know to enter the same number in both of those or I actually have never run it not entering both numbers to know exactly what's going to happen I didn't put something in here to check for that either so this is in a, in a way is a little bit of an unsafe program because these two should be set to the exact same numerical value they just have one's a floating double and the other uh, one is a a uh, number that is not an integer and the other is an integer so what I did here is I've defined a number of different arrays I knew I needed a loop In this case I chose to use a while loop so that uh, it would uh, run if this condition is um, if this condition is satisfied and when the condition is not satisfied it doesn't run anymore you do have to be careful as you do that it is standard C syntax I figured out what my trace ray command was I saved a number that would say where uh, going through the aperture stop where the ray is and I also saved something that allows me to calculate what the uh, telecentricity is so this first part is the part that changes the field point number to different points traces the rays saves my data this increments this variable up notice I use IJ instead of I or J I use IJ because it's not a global variable in Oslo so I'm very safe in using it I tend to avoid using the global variables unless I absolutely need to so IJ plus plus increments it since it's a while loop it's not done like a for loop where it's done up there at the top so uh, this last part is you have to be a little bit careful that the spreadsheet buffer has a maximum number and that's SB max row that's a global variable and SB row is the current uh, location where you are in the overall spreadsheet buffer so what I say here is if I'm getting too close to the spreadsheet buffer max go ahead and just set the pointer back to one so set it back to the first row so I'll never hit a condition where I overshoot on rows when I'm trying to pull data out the other thing if you've noticed I've used SSB and I've used the current uh, SB row minus that number I've known people that since this is a, an inexpensive operation computationally they will just always use SBR 10 or something like that uh, some number so that they can simply call it from uh, the sort of the other direction I'm figuring out where SB row is and subtracting from it you could actually also figure from zero where in your command it is let me actually just show you that because it's reasonably useful when you actually go to develop this what you're going to want to do is you're going to gonna you're going to want to understand what the output of your commands is so here's the output of this command if I look here and I type in SB row I actually get 114 let's say I want this number right here it's 111 the a is the uh, the the column so we have 111 comma 1 SSB would be this number and we can test that out SSB 111 and oops I didn't do 111 111 and 1 and oh yes of course SSB is one where I actually need to call it with this syntax hadn't actually planned to show this this explicitly in the video there you go it's 17.94 so that was just SSB 111.1 so if we look here uh, that actually pulls that value out you I could also do SBR 10 
and then it would simply be the first row up from there. So the key is you need to know where you are in the spreadsheet, but because Oslo has some nice global variables to track that and some nice uh, efficient ways to reset the pointer on it, it's uh, pretty easy to do that. You don't have to do any sort of searching through text or any kinds of things like that. So the next thing I do is just some simple output. I could have put the output in the while loop itself. I didn't do that in case it's a little bit easier if you're going to turn off and on the preference if you go ahead and write in a separate step. So I'm more in the habit of doing this. I set a couple of different things uh, as the sort of top of the data that I have here, these uh, the uh, titles for the different columns in the data set. And then I just go through the same uh, set of endpoints and I just print out my output array and then where it is in the pupil, I put a bunch of space in here. And then I just change the current point which uh, allows me to change uh, it. That's actually a variable that's printed out here if you see. And then we actually just increment this and it goes through the while loop. So what this does, this is a very common thing to do in cases where you need to change the object point, you can go ahead and do that and uh, call different commands and print out useful data, which you can then copy, right click and take into another program or output in some other sort of way. So I'm just going to run it one last time after clearing the spreadsheet buffer so you can see it again. Please feel free to use this however you'd like because we'll provide you, we can provide you with this CCL file. Number of points integer 11, number of points 11, and uh, here is my output normalized field and then all these different parameters and I've actually also put them in the buffer in case I ever wanted to do anything with those numbers. They are also in the spreadsheet buffer. So I hope you've gotten a lot out of this video. It's a more technical video on something that's really good to know how to do in Oslo.